Good morning, you guys. Um, I'm so sad for the people that are still under this bondage of sin and law after Christ gave, died to give us freedom and rest. And uh, they don't understand that there's a progressive revelation of the Holy Spirit all throughout Scripture. Even, even Paul began to grow in his grace, you know, and we're reading about their process of trying to figure out what is this mystery of the cross revealed, you know, that we're free. And it's so unfortunate that people just don't understand that and rest so the Holy Spirit can come and then show them what Scripture means. And I'm attacked and called a false prophet. You're telling people to keep sinning. But I'm here to explain something to you. I, I'm in freedom, and we all should be, and I refuse to come under bondage. I serve the Lord because I love him. I understand what he's done, okay? The problem is people don't realize they're free. It's like they're still trying to beg for a key to the lock, but God has already left the door open for them. But they keep going, please let me out. He's going come out it's open no no but please okay if I'm better if I stop doing this will you let me out and he's saying what are you talking about the doors open just leave no please I'll I promise I'll 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 I'll, I'll do this and I, I'll never smoke again and I'll I'll turn for my adultery and my pornography if you just let me out uh it's it's done just come out the doors open no please God give me give me eternal life well I, I gave it to you in in my son don't you see what he's accomplished no I promise I'll repent of my sins but but no no I, my judgment was already poured on my son he already paid for those sins you know double jeopardy is, is I can't punish you for the same sins my son paid for what what do you well, I promise I'll do this. I, I won't watch porn anymore. I'll stop smoking and drinking if you just give me eternal life. What well, my son gave you eternal life. It's free. You just got to reach out and grab it by faith. What What's the problem? You see what I'm saying here? I, I, I want you to understand the freedom we have. And these people try to understand scripture through their carnal minds. Now, I want to explain to you. In the book of Timothy, it was probably the last letters that Paul ever wrote. He had grown in God's grace. He was really understanding how much the finished work of Christ accomplished for us. And in Hebrews, he warns the Hebrew people, stop, don't go back to animal sacrifice. If you make that willful sin of choosing a, a lamb or a goat, there is no more sacrifice for your sins. You see, that, that's, that's a willful choice to reject the sacrificial death. Now, what those people did is they were believers now. They believed the gospel but just in case, I better go ahead and do this. See, they didn't really trust in what Christ accomplished. So they're like, same way with the people that tell you, you got to repent of your sins. And, and I'll explain why we don't do that, but why we choose not to sin because we're saved. Okay? There are consequences. Sin will bring terrible consequences in your life. And God wants the best for us. There are natural consequences. If you have a watch porn, it might stir up lust. You might commit adultery. You break up your family. Your children are devastated. They can grow up to be scarred and commit crimes and go to jail. And say, uh, your wife could kill your girlfriend. There's murder. Look, see, it all turns into ugliness. This is why once we're saved, the Holy Spirit comes up in us and works in us. But he doesn't convict of sin like, like you would think, okay? It's not like that. He, he's convicting you of righteousness, your right standing with God. He's the comforter. The one that reminds you of your sin all the time is Satan, okay? He's trying to tell you a lie. What is he? He's a liar, was a liar from the beginning, and he's the father of lies. So he's going to tell you, okay, that wasn't enough what Jesus did. You also have to do something because you can't just have the free gift and be free. Do you understand? Now, the word um, kotorizo is the only time Paul uses it. It's in his last letter to Timothy, okay, right before his own death. He knew he was going to die. Now, most people think the itching ears thing is about grace. See, they just want to hear they can abuse grace. It's garbage. That's not what the world wants to hear. Believe it or not, the world loves the law. Yep, that's right. They can't live any way they want. Yep, that's right. They're going to hell for that smoking and that lifestyle. That's what they love, okay? They also love to hear, be good, get good. Be good, get to heaven. Be bad, go to hell. They love that because it makes sense to the carnal mind. And when he's talking about that, the cauterizo is seared with a hot iron. It's not that they have a conscience and they can no longer feel guilty for sin. That's not what that means. And I heard a wonderful Greek scholar and a pastor both say this. That cauterization causes the bleeding to stop 
and a scar to be there. So you have a constant reminder of that injury, okay? Sin was an injury to us, okay? So what happens to these people that have a con? Because it says they're hypocrites and, you know, they're bringing in the law is what it is. And we know that keep the law is stop sinning. Keep the law, stop transgressing the law, keep the law, repent of your sins, keep the law. It's the same heresy in the first century church. They're not resting. I'm going to give you this. I don't care. You can tell me you better repent of your sins, young lady, and you're a false prophet. I know the freedom I have, and I know the lifestyle I've overcome resting in his grace. I don't struggle with heroin addiction. I don't live the crazy Hollywood life. I don't sleep with everybody in town. I just don't care about that stuff. Because I allowed him to work on me. I believed him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Believe on the Lord. Whosoever believes in him should not perish. Do you understand? It's all done. You can't have double jeopardy. He's not going to punish you with loss of eternal life because you stayed in a sin. Do you understand that? He's already punished Jesus for your sin. So if he sends you to hell for a sin, then he's a liar. Because he said that his justice was poured out. His wrath was poured on Jesus. Okay? So, I don't care. You can send me the verses all you want. I always explain them. They go, oh, you twist it. No, I understand it. Okay? I have the same teacher as all other grace teachers. The Holy Spirit guides us all into truth. All right? I don't say I know everything. But when I'm on here and I'm telling you something, it's because it's been on my heart and it's clear to me. These people want to bring you back into bondage. See, these this conscious sear with a hot iron is that they have a constant sin consciousness. Constantly condemned in their spirit about the sin, and they're looking for sin in you, and they're looking for sin in the church, and they're looking for sin in themselves, and they're looking for sin in the world. We're supposed to be free, okay? We don't focus on sin. Strength of sin is the law. So the more you focus on how you got to repent of that sin to be saved, it's garbage, okay? It's a lie from hell. The repent of sins heresy has happened since the first century church. It's the same as keep the law. There's nothing different about it. Biblical repentance is defined in 2 Timothy. The God grants you true repentance, which is to come to the knowledge of the truth. Repentance here is a change of mind. God repented more than any man. Now, if it says repent of your wicked ways, that means repent of your sins. But if it doesn't say of sins, it's just a change of mind or turn towards God. All right? It has nothing to do with you're trying to stop sinning in your flesh. You don't try to fix the flesh so that your spirit is reborn. Do you understand? You're, it's two separate things here. We, Our spirit is reborn by believing the simple gospel in first Corinthians, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, fulfilling scriptures for the remission of sins. Paul said that's the gospel he preached and the one that saved them. Do you understand? There's nothing more to it. They call it easy believism and watered down gospel. You don't pick up your cross to get saved, okay? That was two Jews under the law, two specific disciples that may have to carry their cross and die for the mission he was giving them. He's letting them know, do you know what you're going to do for my name's sake? He's warning them, don't want to be my disciple unless you're willing to forfeit and hate your mother and father and pick up your cross and lose everything, even your life. This is not about salvation, people. We have to divide the word. I, I, I don't know how to make it clear to you. You will never, ever bring me in to bondage of being sin conscience again because I know that Christ died for my sins. He already paid for them. They are off my account. My sins are gone whether I repent of them or not. Do you understand? Now why we stay away from the sinful lifestyle is again, there's harmful consequences on this earth and we want to be a good witness to others so they can see Christ in us and also get saved. Now what stirred me up to do this Somebody's sending me a scripture that they completely don't understand, that they think proves you can lose salvation. Okay, you didn't do anything to get it. 
You certainly can't do anything to keep it. Your, your righteousness was filthy rags. It didn't get you saved. It's certainly not going to keep you saved. Okay, I've done endure to the end. Is it God that keeps us or our own self-effort? The endure to the end verse isn't even about salvation. It's about people living during the tribulation. And if they're still enduring or surviving when Christ returns, he'll save them from physical death. Do you see how they rest the scriptures to their own destruction? Look, in Hebrews, he said, For we which have believed do enter into rest. Are you resting when you're constantly struggling against the flesh? i got to get over the sin. i got to get over the sin so I don't get to hell. It's just ridiculous. These people have no clue. And yes, they do feed the itching ears of those people that, well, that makes sense to me. You got to stop sinning to get to heaven. See, that makes sense to the natural mind. But God's ways are higher than our ways. Do you understand? I'm not telling you keep sinning because you will pay for it. God's not mocked. You'll reap what you sow here on this earth. Do you understand? And we want to live for him because we're saved to do good works. You understand? So we can save others. It's all about telling people the good news so they too can be reconciled to God. See, God's already reconciled himself to the world. Now we just have to receive that gift so we can be reconciled to God. He's already reconciled us to himself. Now we have to do that. The new covenant wasn't between God and us. The new covenant was between the Father and Jesus. You see, so we don't have anything on our side to fulfill. Again, the new covenant was between the Father and Jesus. Not us. Do you understand? We have no part in it except to receive the gift, the finished work, eternal life by faith and what Christ did. We receive what he accomplished. All right? We're not paying for our own sins. And he doesn't punish us for those sins. If he sent you to hell for sinning after he already punished his son and put him to death for the same sin, even your future ones, because remember, it was all future when he died, and he was slain from the foundation of the world. So it was done. He knew what would happen. He knew what you're going to do. He knows what you're going to do tomorrow. He knows how bad you're going to mess up. And again, we limit sin to these behaviors. It's in our thought, word, and deed. Envy, t watching TV, coveting, uh, fear, worry, strife, getting offended, having some feeling sorry for you. All of these are sin, okay? Just, just stop. It's all paid for, all right? I, I'm sick of the false prophets, the Ray Comforts and the Paul. Oh, we're <laughs> Paul Watcher. Oh, we're bad. It's just ridiculous. You know, this conscience seared, they're looking at the scar of sin. So they just focus on it and focus on it and focus on it. And they never get free. Then they want to come attack me because I'm free and I get it. You understand? I know I'm free. I struggled in that heroin addiction. I was just, oh, God, I'm going to stop. I don't want to go to hell. It was just stupid. You understand? Now that I was free, he worked in me. He made a way for me to get some medical help. I don't worry about it. I don't think about it. When temptations come up, I'm like, eh. And I don't hear. You know what I hear, the voice? You are a princess, a child of the king. You don't play in the mud. You don't do that. That's not who you are. Not, you better not do that. You're going to go to hell. That's the voice of Satan. That's not God's voice. That's not the Holy Spirit. He convicts you of righteousness. He edifies you, lifts you up, and comforts you. The comforter. The helper. He's here to tell you the good news. You guys are mixing up the voices here. Satan's the one that's telling you, you better turn from that sin so you're going to go to hell. It's already paid for. You see, Christ is glorified in that finished work. It says, for we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath. If they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Okay? Why are you still trying to get what he already gave you? It's stupid. I My heart hurts for you. Okay? Because I know the more you look at that sin and struggle on the sin, the more you're going to be burdened by it. All right? Trust. Believe the simple gospel. It's the same one Paul preached, okay? They mock it as easy believism, but he said the offense of the cross would cease if he'd add, keep the law, repent of your sins, get baptized, do the circumcision, do the good works, because it makes sense to man. Do you understand? They hate it. They have no self-righteous pride. They can't say, see, I stopped drinking, and I stopped this, and I surrendered my life to the Lord. Well, good for you, okay? But that didn't save you. None of it saves you. What he did alone saves you. There is nothing left to do. I did it in the Never Question Your Salvation Again wedding video. 
And this is the scripture the girl sends me this morning to try to prove that you'll lose salvation. And, and it's amazing because the, the um, gospel is actually in it. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you have also received and wherein you stand, by which you are also saved. And that is the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you keep in memory what I preached, unless you believed in vain. See? They can believe in vain and lose salvation. No, 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 no. Believing in vain means how can they share the gospel, the pure gospel of grace, that it's all finished, if they forget that? How can they get others saved so they too get the Holy Spirit if they forget that? Do you understand? It's not about them forgetting and losing salvation. I've given you tons of verses about how it's God that keeps us saved, okay? It's all done, people. Stop rejecting his gift by trying to pay God for something he's trying to give you. Do you understand? I, I don't know. I, I feel so bad for these people that are living in this. And they, 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 because it sounds right to man, they think they got it. They think they understand. They don't, okay? They just don't. Ugh, it's crazy. And, and, and I, 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 don't, I don't know how to clarify it. I mean, he warns us. Foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you would be so soon removed from the simplicity that's in Christ? Okay, he wants us to proclaim the good news that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. He was buried and rose again on the third day. Proof that he paid for our sins because we wouldn't have known if he really accomplished that because he said, I came to give my life as a ransom for many. Okay, we wouldn't have known if he had accomplished that unless he resurrected and he did. Okay, that's the good news. It's been finished, people. Just stop focusing on your sin so much. Receive the gift. His spirit will come in. You'll understand scripture, and you'll live in freedom. And then when that sin attack, you know, it may take a while for it to fall off. But it did me. You can't, you can't prove me. You can't. I make no sense if grace is, is not true, okay? And it's very clear. If it's grace, it's grace. It's works, it's worse. It can't be grace and works. It can't be square and circle at the same time. You can't be barefooted and have shoes on at the same time, okay? If you're bringing your efforts in, it says repent of your dead works under faith. Repent of your self-effort and all other systems you think are going to get you saved. It's only him, you understand? Be free in that. No, honey, you will never bring me back into that sin conscience garbage i'm not going to listen to satan you know what what did he do in the garden of eden he made eve question her closeness to god she was already like god she already had everything god wasn't keeping something from her god wasn't mad at her but he twisted it and made her think well are you really like god do you really have everything he says that you have do you see it's the same thing here are you really saved are you really free you better make sure you do that just as a backup plan you know but those people that don't believe on the Lord the fearful and unbelieving they're cast into the lake of fire okay so what you think is right isn't right all right the whole world believes in repenting of sins to be saved the gate is narrow because Jesus is the only way and it's by receiving the free gift that's it not because it's hard He's the only way. The whole world, Muslims, Buddhists, Catholics, every Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, repent of sins, repent of sins, do the good works, sanctify, deny the flesh. That's How is in the world is that the narrow way, people? Come on, get real. Nobody's telling you keep sinning. You'll have consequences. He's not mock. You're, you're going to have consequences. But those are just natural consequences. You can have an early death. You can have all kinds of, like I explained with the adultery earlier. Your life can be destroyed by sin. God knows it's harmful to us he doesn't want us to have the danger the harm and the consequences he doesn't want our lives destroyed he wants us living in his purpose so that we can get others saved and be a good witness of christ in us okay but we're not turning from our own sins to be saved the burden of sin was on christ he took it all so god can't send you to hell or punish you for some sin the only way you'd go to hell is rejecting the gift by faith it's already finished you not receiving that gift that he's already tried to give you is the only way that you don't get into heaven. And I don't care about your straw man. And I don't care how you don't think it's fair that this person lives like this and gets into heaven. Because all have fallen short. You understand? And there's the Bema Seat of Christ that judges believers based on their faithful service. Based on the good works they did. Okay? So there is a way that God, you know, 
gives loss or gain according to the saved believers, okay? But the self-righteous don't want to believe that. They don't want to hear it. What's the point of the Bema Seat if they just automatically go to hell because they sin? It's just stupid. The sins were already paid for. God, it's double jeopardy. God can't punish you for the same sin. Do you understand? And if you reject the gift by faith, grace through faith is exactly what it means. If you reject that gift, then you pay for your own sins in hell, that second death, okay? But the only way you pay for your own sins for eternity is if you reject the gift of God. So I don't care. You can tell me, you better repent of your sin. They don't know how I live. I live like an amazing life. People are all around me go, that's a woman of God. You know, I show Christ in me. They know God's in me. You just assume I love sin. You assume I'm trying to justify some sin. No, I'm trying to get you free so you too can stop focusing on sin all the time in you and everybody else because you turn into a bunch of self-righteous judgmental jerks. That's not God. He's already paid for it. Do you understand that? He wants you in freedom. Rest. Come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Repenting is not turning from your own sins to be saved, people. It's a change of mind and true repentance. The gift that God gives you, the, the God grants you true repentance to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay? Bye-bye.